seven Copa Libertadores titles, 16 Argentine top flight titles. Independiente are a club steeped in history in Argentina, but in real life at the time of recording, they find themselves in 24th in the division. So we are taking our talents to Argentina to rebuild Independiente this Sunday. Diving into the game, you can see their jagged history throughout the course of the competitions and stuff. And as I said, seven-time winners of the Copa Libertadores last in 1984. 16-time winners of the Argentine top flight uh, in most recently in 2003. So 20 years since they've won a title. They've got a Copa Sudamericana as well. So they've got a lot of history, lots of trophies in the trophy cabinet, but not having a good time of it right now. If we go over to the tactic for today's video, we are going to be running in the GYR Valente victory is a 4-4-1-1 effectively with the central attacking midfielder. Um, I, I like this tactic, guys. Go and check it out. The link will be down in the description. Um, and this guy is someone who I'm looking at, at leading the line. Matias Jimenez. He looks very good, very well-rounded. 22 years of age, six foot one. As I said, supremely well-rounded, nice physicals as well. The one thing I don't like about this guy, he is consistent, but he doesn't enjoy big matches. So it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. He's going to be leading the line for me. But we've got some interesting players as well. Ivan uh, Marcon here, he looks quite good as well, but he is 31 years of age. So we need to kind of refresh this squad because it is relatively on the old side. If we go into the competitions tab, this is how we're looking this season, guys. Obviously, we do have uh, the uh, Argentinian League. We do have the Copa Sudamericana and the League, uh, the Cup and the League Cup. Now, I will say for those of you who aren't aware how things work in South America, the Copa Sudamericana is like the second tier continental competition. You have the Copa Libertadores, which is like the Champions League equivalent. Then you have the Copa Sudamericana, which is like the Europa League equivalent. So it's the second tier comp uh, continental competition that we are in at the start of the season but as i said 24th irl it's not going well for independiente so in terms of things we do have the league cup i believe it starts first there's a lot of fixtures in argentina guys just look at all of these and there's still copa sudamericana fixtures to fit in as well so we are going to simulate and see how we do get on in terms of the league though this is how the league looks there's no relegation here um but uh, problems if you don't finish anywhere near the continental competition uh, spots. We are predicted to finish in ninth, which is still not great. There's a lot of big Argentine teams above us. River Plate, Boca, Racing, Velez. Uh, you can see the big names that you would recognize, of course. We need to try and break into that and try and get ourselves back into that Copa Libertadores competition. Let's see how season one goes, boys. It's a lot of games in Argentina. <laughs> Okay, so all in all, a very successful first season, in my opinion. We were runners-up at the Argentine League Cup. We were knocked out in the seventh round uh, by Velez in the uh, Exxon Energy uh, Copa Argentina. Semi-finalists in the Copa Sudamericana. And we finished in sixth in the Argentine League. Uh, Goody Cruz is how I'm going to say this team's name. They have won the league uh, relatively comfortably as well over Boca. Uh, we do get ourselves qualified into a uh, Copa Libertadores spot, which was the main goal of season number one. Um, I wanted to win the Copa Sudamericana. It didn't happen. We got knocked out in the semifinals. If we take a look at the semifinal here, you can see we lost 4-2 on aggregate. Um, and then Internacional uh, from Brazil took on Banfield in the final and the team from Brazil did win. So score one for Brazil. Seventh round of the cup, as I did mention. But all in all, things went pretty well. In this league cup, we lost on pens to the team that won the league. So maybe this was a good sign of how they were going to get on. Uh, they did go on to win the league. So fair play to them as well. A little league and cup double action for them. Did they win a treble? No. Okay, good. Okay, so that's always good to see. Um, so in terms of things for the second season, then we need to build on what we have done here. We're back in the Libertadores, so a little bit more cash if we take a look at things. I'm not flush with cash, so uh, we do need to be considerate of how things are going here, of course. Uh, we've got around, what's that, 8K in the wage budget and around 347,000. But what I'm probably going to do is move it all into the wage budget. Gives us around 15 grand a week to get some new blood into the team. Obviously, we're going to have some players coming in, some players going out. Let's tune in for the transfer update for season number two, which is coming up right now. 
So guys, if you do like the rebuild content on the channel, please do consider hitting that like button down below just to let me know that you do enjoy the content and you want to see more rebuilds from me. And if you are new around here, please do consider hitting that subscribe button as well so you're notified when we upload every single video on this channel. We're closing into actually a thousand videos on the channel now, which is just absolutely ridiculous. So let's talk transfers for season number two. This is gonna be a relatively quick update because there's nothing to show you. Nobody in, nobody out. We had several players actually out on loan last season, uh, and, and that's kind of where we're looking at uh, moving things forward, because as you can see, if we quit pick without restriction, this is how our best 11 is looking now. Um, I actually think we're doing quite well. Uh, and I'm quite happy with the team. The issue is, I will say the two-star fullbacks is because they are playing inverted wingbacks, they're not actually bad players. They're three-star players, um, but they're being forced to play positions that they just don't know how to play, basically. This guy's actually a really good fullback in a traditional sense, uh, but yeah, being forced to play as the inverted wingback, not really in his wheelhouse. Uh, Jimenez, who I'm going to touch on from last season, uh, got himself 12 goals in all comps, which isn't too, too bad. Um, looks like, a, like he was a good purchase from San Martin, uh, so hoping uh, he can push on this season and, and, you know, do a little bit better for us. Um, if we go and take a look at the competitions, guys, this is how we are looking. We do have the Argentine League Cup, of course, the Argentine Cup, where we are entering in the sixth round, uh, but we do have the Copa Libertadores. We do have to qualify for it, though, where we, first of all, take on O'Higgins FC. It's a very nice-looking stadium, but they come out of Chile, uh, so this is going to be very interesting to see how we do get on and how we do qualify, and then, obviously, we do have the League. If we go and take a look at the League uh, season pre Preview. This is how we are looking this season. We are predicted to finish in seventh, so climbing just a little bit. We've got ourselves one player in the Media Dream 11. It's our goalkeeper, uh, so we are looking to see uh, how he can do. Uh, this is Rodrigo Ray. He looks quite good. Uh, looking forward to seeing what he does, but he is old. This squad is old, chat. Uh, chat. Uh, comment section. This, this squad is old. As you can see, I'm trying to promote some of the youth players into the team uh, to get a little bit more uh, game time in them, but as you can see here, there's so many players over 30 it is ridiculous and i know this is quite hypocritical because i'm 32 as well a little bit hypocritical saying look at all these 30 year olds i get it comment section you don't need to flame me um so we are predicted to finish in seventh in the league let's see how season number two gets on okay so there was definite improvement for season number two but we're a little bit disappointed in all the cup competitions. As you can see, we're knocked out. It just says knocked out in the Argentine League Cup. If we go on here and take a look, we got actually all the way to the quarterfinals uh, where we were then knocked out on penalties. Relatively disappointed, but our man Jimenez was the top goal scorer in the competition despite being knocked out at the quarterfinal stage. We're knocked out in the seventh round again on penalties. Maybe that's something we need to work on in training. Uh, rather disappointing. <sighs> the group stage. Copa Libertadores. It did not go very well for us. We were in a group with River Plate, um, Botafogo, and Penarol. Obviously, Penarol are from Uruguay. Uh, we got no points. I'm not going to beat around the bush. It was a poor, poor season for us in this competition. But... Um a little bit of realisation as to how far we do need to go. In the league, though, Velez win the league. We do finish in uh, in fourth, but we are 11 points behind Velez, so still lots of work to do here. As you can see, Matias Jimenez is our top goal scorer in every single competition. He's now a four-star player, age 24. Uh, still no caps for the Argentine full side. Um, still hates big matches, so <laughs> maybe you can't change a player all that much. A very bridging season is what I'm going to say. We actually went from sixth to fourth in the league so i'm not going to be too too harsh on it but the cut performance is just not acceptable if we take a look at the finances though for the season because we actually we go into the transfer history we did sell some players uh rodrigo ray who i mentioned at the start of the season our goalkeeper who was in the media dream 11 yeah he went to ren uh for 2.1 million pounds in uh in june which is right in the middle of my season in argentina uh the season runs from like uh, january almost through to december um and Rodrigo Ray disappeared in the middle of it, which is disappointing. Uh, but he obviously got the call to go to Europe. And obviously, £2.1 million pounds is quite a lot of money uh, for this sort of level. If we take a look, obviously, we've got £1.4 of it in the transfer budget. And it's actually really helped us bolster our wage budget as well. So I'm not... I'm not too disappointed by it, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what we can do for season number three. 
Okay, guys, so I was active or much more active in season number three's transfer window. As you can see, transfers out totaled four million pounds and we've only brought in players on free transfers. But let's talk about the players that have left. Sergio Ortiz has gone for a million. Uh, he has gone to play for, I don't know who this is, Club Almente Brown. Uh, he's gone to play for them for a million quid for a player who is... <sighs> just not my cup of tea he's only got 10 pace not very good physically um he's got good marking and stuff like that but he's a central midfielder who can mark he's 22 he's five for eight a million pounds really really good for me obviously we've had a couple of players leave out on loan thomas pozzo is another player the latest player to go to europe he has gone to cremonese over in italy if i open his profile there you can see what he looks like he looks like a very good player he is a very good player uh, i would have liked to have kept him however European big leagues they do call for these sorts of players in South America um, so he left for three million pounds so we've gone out and we spent some money on wages effectively Andrada comes in on a free transfer he comes in to be another Segundo Volante for us we need two of them and he can be one of them uh, this man Brian uh, Gary is uh, an absolute butcher of his name he comes in as a wing back for us or inverted wing back he looks very good as well I'd like to work on his passing a little bit but as an actual fullback I think he's very very good uh canelli uh comes in as a uh sort of another option he can play as that winger on that right hand side can play as a right back again squad depth options are quite big with the amount of games that we do have to play william comes in as well another player in that position can play as a natural uh, on that right hand side but he's very accomplished at playing on the left hand side as well so very good as an inverted wing back to play on the right hand side and come in and be on his stronger right uh, right foot I'm actually quite happy with him. Carlos Eduardo comes in as well. Um, again, winger option. Looks quite tricky. He's got 16 pace, so having fast players helps, I guess. Uh, and then the final player is uh, uh, Esquivel. He comes in to effectively replace Pozzo. Pozzo left for 3 million. We spent some wages on this guy. He comes in to uh, basically replace. Uh, can play as a natural in that cam position or in central midfield. So he comes in, and I think we're actually ready to go to the next level. If I quick pick without restriction our best 11, this is how we're looking. Jimenez is still the main man up top. He is probably one of the best players in our team right now. Kevin Lopez is uh, alongside him as one of the other good players. He, I swear we signed, did we sign him? I can't, I cannot remember now. Nope, he's been here the whole time, Steve. I have no idea what I'm talking about. He's quite good. Uh, so the team is looking quite good. I'm ready, ready to make a push. I'd like to make a title push this season in the league and obviously be a bit better in the Cups. We take a look at the Cups. We are in the Copa Libertadores, as you know. This is a much better group for us. Obviously, Palmeiras from Brazil, a very big juggernaut. Uh, but the other two teams, Caracas um, from, uh, I don't know where that is, Venezuela. And uh, Blooming from, I have no idea. I'm really bad with flags, guys. This is really bad. Bolivia, maybe? No. Yeah, Bolivia. I was right. Fantastic. Um, so we should be should be finishing at least second in this group. Um, obviously in the Copa Argentina we have River Plate, so that's going to be very interesting. And we do have the League Cup as well. Um, in terms of the league, though, if we take a look at the season preview, we are now predicted to finish in sixth. Um, again, much the same. Uh, Copa Libertadores qualification that would be River Plate and Boca Juniors are fighting out at the top, and then it would appear there's quite a big drop off between them and Velez Racing and ourselves, etc there's a few of us at 25 to 1 as well so let's simulate season three and see if we can close the gap and maybe have title push so we closed the gap but the title push didn't really happen however our performance in all the cups really really improved as you can see on screen right now we actually won both domestic trophies uh, the league cup and the argentine cup yes okay we got knocked out in the second round of the libertadores that was by vasco da gama another one of the biggest sides from brazil and we finished in fourth in the league but this time we're only five point uh six points sorry behind river plate who did go on to win the title so it was 11 last season it's just six now we've kind of almost half that whilst picking up some trophies on the way the argentine league cup we beat uh defensia in that final two goals to one jimenez with the goals especially that 95th minute winner we took the lead we gave a goal away and then jimenez pops up with that goal it says he doesn't like big games but he scored two in that final there and if we go and take a look at the copa argentina uh, we played a team that i've uh, i apologize i've not actually heard of this team before i ex excuse my ignorance uh but fernando de rosa scored three for us and jimenez 
Nunez again in a final scoring despite not enjoying big matches. So uh, a very nice performance from the team there. Obviously in the second round of the Copa Libertadores, we lost 4-1 on aggregate um, to Vasco. We drew 0-0 in Argentina, went back to Brazil and we kind of got pumped basically. Um, so... Still some work to do in terms of continental football. And as I said, we mentioned uh, we dropped the deficit from 11 points down to sixth. Um, the board only want us to finish inside the top half, but I'm really considering just trying to push on as much as we possibly can. Copa Libertadores football for, again for next season. Boca having a pretty poor time of it. Uh, racing having a pretty poor time of it as well. So with two cup wins, I'm hoping maybe next season it, the, league, the league comes. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. As I said, guys, there's a lot of fixtures in Argentina. It's just really relentless the fixtures are ridiculous like we have a we have a cup game in our preseason as well it's just um it's just mad the amount of games anyway finances going into season number four let's talk about some of the transfers out because the way it happens is quite irritating um because obviously when the european windows open that's the middle of the season for me so i don't really get time to talk to you about all of them uh, but we did sell this guy kevin lopez the guy who i touched on previously he has gone to fulham for five million quid um so we bring in some of these players obviously from different youth setups from different countries or different clubs in Argentina. And uh, then we ideally try and sell them off for big profit to European clubs. Um, and that is exactly what we've done here. We've got 2.7 million pounds in the transfer budget and around 40 grand a week in the wage budget. If I move most of that over, our wage budget would almost increase by 100,000 a week, which for a club in Argentina is absolutely huge. Let's go and see what we can do with it for season number four. Okay, so let's talk free transfers because I haven't actually spent any money again going into season number four. We picked up some free agents. I say free agents, their contracts expire at the end of uh, December and we picked them up on the 1st of uh, January. Uh, Vargas comes in, centre back for a six foot four, 29 year old Costa Rican. Looks like a big lad. Hopefully he's going to be a big danger for us on set pieces. He looks like a big threat. 16 jump in reach, 15 head in. As I said, he is six foot four as well. He looks very good. Kevin Ortiz comes in uh, as one of those midfielders to replace the players that we've lost uh lopez and pozo and stuff like that over to europe uh, he comes in to replace them he looks like a good little player 20 determination on him uh 24 years of age good high natural fitness good leadership as well nice long shots can ping a ball from quite far out hopefully uh julian oud comes in or Ad adway i have no idea how i'm saying these boys names he is the fullback on the left side for us this time we strengthened quite a lot in that right back area now it's time to move into that left back area he looks quite good nice high position in as well good dribbling good first touch good passing comfortable on the ball which is exactly what we need for the inverted wing back uh, then we talk about Montero he comes in goalkeeper for a 17 jumping reach six foot five just big Colombian just command in the air yes please thank you my ball that's exactly what I'm looking for for this guy uh, in terms of our goalkeepers and then we sign this guy as well Thomas Moro uh, he comes in on a free transfer as well to play in that central attacking midfield position high agility high determination good and solid off the ball as well nice and creative with 15 passing uh, was capped uh, by the Argentine under 20s at one point he is 22 years of age now so we obviously had something about him to be capped at the national team level if we go and quick pick without restriction our best 11 this is how the team is looking uh, moving into this season uh, Montero comes in as the goalkeeper William Barreto uh, Vargas comes in uh, Aguirre is still there uh, Almen Al Almendra, Ortiz, Gonzalez, Marquez, Muro, and then Jimenez. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to talk about Jimenez because his star rating's gone down, but this man knows where the back of the net is, just consistent in terms of producing goals for us. Uh, 46 in all competitions for us last season, 34 the year before and 19 the year before, so he's definitely stepping up. I want to see if he can break 50 this year. Um, I think that would be an unbelievable achievement for someone like that. Uh, this man here wants a new deal. We'll definitely make sure we do that before the start of the season talking about the competitions though obviously we did win the argentine cup which means we have the super copa argentina where we take on league winners river plate as an additional one for us this year uh, we are in a group with nacional um, from uh, uruguay in the copa libertadores alongside gremio and dtfc again another venezuelan team so this is going to be interesting to see how we get on obviously we are probably the second biggest team in here i would say but uh, behind gremio maybe i'm sorry please don't take offense there uh, gremio from brazil is going to be a difficult ask uh, but we will see in terms of the league they want us to finish in uh, the board sorry they want us to finish inside the top six places now so they are kind of ensuring that we get that uh, libertadores football 
and we are now predicted to finish third in the league. You can definitely see we are making strides, um, but the distance between ourselves and River Plate is actually quite, quite large. Uh, they are still predicted to win the league relatively comfortably, uh, and Boca Juniors are predicted to come in second. So, season number four. Come on, this is the season. Title charge, let's have it. Oh, guys, season four. I just don't know where to start. It was so close. It was so close to being a phenomenal season. If you take a look at the screen, we had some unbelievable, unbelievable results. Um, let's start from right to left. Argentine League Cup, our defense of that, almost. We almost defended it. We lost to Newell's old boys in the final, two goals to nil. Uh, relatively disappointing because it felt like we were kind of kind of on top of them. Um, extra year 2.7. Eight shots on target, didn't score. Their goalkeeper got an 8.0 rating. Feeling a little bit hard done by in that particular uh, competition. We were runners up in the Supercopa, uh, Supercopa Argentina, losing that final 1 0 to River Play. Enzo Diaz uh, with that sole goal there. But River kind of did show that they were the better team in this one. And then uh, not tying the seventh round of the Copa Argentina. So the defense of that one did not go very well. Velez pick up a, a win there. As you can see, different winners in every four of the last seasons. Uh, showing how difficult it is to win that competition. Then the biggie. Copa Libertadores. We got to the final. And then we took on Flamengo. Who have won it three out of the last four years. And we got buzzled. Absolutely dominated three goals from flamengo one in the first half an own goal and then a penalty just to round it off but if you look at the match stats we just weren't at the races we only had six shots one on target uh, versus their 23 shots and eight on target so we did a relatively all right job at stifling them personally but the disparity between us and them quite a lot quite a lot uh seems like the brazilians are very tough to get past and then we've closed the gap even more it was six points to the title last season in the league now it's three. Now it's three. We have a better goal difference as well. We finished one point behind Boca, three points behind River with the best goal difference. We all won 20 games. I just need to get over the hill. Like we're doing well in all these cup competitions. To be a runner up in the Copa Libertadores is absolutely huge, but we just can't get it done and can't get it over the line in the league. Let's go into the fight. Oh, let's do the transfers first because I'm sure there were players who departed in the middle of the season because this is how things work as you can see 3.8 million pounds made uh thomas uh rambert he went over to ibar in spain uh, for a decent amount of money was nowhere near my first team so uh was happy to see him leave uh for 2.5 million which could rise to uh, 2.9 million again for a player that i wasn't even playing yes please uh we also got rid of this guy edgar elizabeth he go he he leaves the club he goes over to osasuna again another one over to spain 1.2 million pounds for him very nicely well-rounded defender but um yeah when that european money comes offering you kind of get rid uh and we replaced him with uh valenti here as the backup um center back again looks okay natural fitness is decent high side jump and reach 26 years of age um Got to try and balance the book somehow. Um, I'm hoping with the money that we keep recouping, we're going to start to do okay. Our committed spend on wages is is like five grand a week under what our wage budget is. We're currently overspending just right now. Uh, and we've only got 600k in that transfer budget. So let's go and see what we can do if there's any other additions for season number five. Okay, guys. So this is the point of the video where if you are still watching this video, I ask you to comment something down below to let me know that you're still here going into season number five of this Independiente rebuild. And we're managing a team in Argentina so just comment down below World Cup winners they did win the World Cup Argentina so I feel it's right to ask for that as a comment so diving in season five's transfers he must have done something right to improve this team nope didn't do anything no players in no no real players out uh, a couple players out on loan but nothing major um I really have faith in this team I, I, I just have faith. I felt like we were so close last year. Another season to really improve people uh, would be would be the way forward. Jimenez is 26 now. He's going into his prime. Uh, last season for us in all comps, he only scored 39. So a little bit of a down season for him. Average rating was higher. Down season though on, on the whole year in terms of that goal output. I'm expecting him to go off this year. The relationships that the team have developed in, in between their player links and stuff. I just feel like everything's right. Everything's set everything is ready for hopefully a big year we were so close last year 
absolute bridesmaids, never the bride last year. So um, we're going to have to see what we can do this time around. These are the competitions, though. No Super Copa this time around. Argentine League Cup, the Copa Argentina, the Libertadores, where we were in with America de Cali, Botafogo, and a winner from the third round uh, qualifying match. Uh, not really sure who that could be. Uh, let's have a look. It'll be one of these guys. If it's Fluminense, I will be devastated. <laughs> or Corinthians. I just don't want anyone from Brazil to make this harder than it already is. Um, and then the board wants us to finish inside the top six places in the league again, which I would like to think we could do. River have won it back to back. Uh, and we are now predicted to finish in third again still uh, with a couple more players now. Uh, uh, Costa is one of the players, as is uh, Thomas Moro into that media dream 11. Uh, we've definitely closed the odds. The odds are, were much, much bigger last season. Boca are predicted to win the league. We are predicted to finish third. Um, but it's very tight there. Very tight between the three of us at the top. And I'm hoping we can cause a little bit of an upset. Because if I go through a season, a five-season rebuild, and I don't even win the league, and I've not had to get promoted into the league, I'd probably class that as a little bit of a failure. Let's get through the season and see how season number five does. <laughs> I told you we were close last season. What a season is season number five. We have almost won everything. We were winners in the Argentine League Cup. We've managed to win it two out of the five years, beating Rosario Central in that final. Muro and Jimenez popping up with the goals in that final. Again, getting our hands on this trophy, winning it. We are the only a team to win it twice in five years is a very impressive feat. I'm really happy with how the team has performed in this one. We were runners up in the Copa Argentina. We took on Velez. We didn't have it all our way. Uh, we had a man sent off after seven minutes, scored an own goal, conceded a late one disappointing but the red card will really do that when a center back of yours gets sent off after seven minutes so we didn't have a clean sweep this year but a very impressive team uh, and i'm very very happy with them let's talk about the copa libra de dores we took on river in the final and brazilian carlos eduardo went off hat trick for this man javier cruz and nicolas uh Gar scoring the goals for river um uh, kind of making making a case in point we absolutely dominated them looking at the stats of this game 14 shots and nine on target 3.15 xg for the boys um yeah okay they had the possession edge but we were the much better team here and carlos eduardo playing as a striker going off in this one and then we'll talk about the league i believe i believe i will check it was our highest points total ever we had 62 last season 62 last season yeah, our highest points total so far. 63 points this year was enough to win the league title by six points over River. We only lost twice all season. Once to Boca, once to Tellerez. Um, two losses all season. Only conceded 27 goals. Scored 64. We were the best team in Argentina this year and absolutely dominated and deserved to win the title. Ooh, new gen. Ah, <gasps> uh, yes, please. He looks amazing. He's wanted by 13 clubs. I've got to have a look. Oh my God. I just want to touch on Jimenez just real quick. Um, he scored 36 in all competitions again for us this season. Another high average rating season. Just goes to show that the big matches don't really mean anything. And some of these coaches reports are not really, not really reflective of how good players can be. Because this guy has been absolutely phenomenal for us. Still hasn't been capped by Argentina, but... Given some of their forward talent, you would kind of understand. Independiente, yes, please. I would say you have been rebuilt. You've got almost 3 million to spend and about 100K in wage budget. If you did want to continue the save, which you can do so via my Discord, I will put the link to the Discord in the description. You can come in, join, pick up this save from this point and carry it on yourself. If you are an Independiente fan or you fancy something different, there's a lot of games in Argentina, so I hope you come and enjoy it. And if you do like the rebuild content, guys, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that we've done on this year's game so far.